Hey, it's Chris. Let's do this. Best of September. Where did things fall crowdfunding wise? Where did things fall games played wise? Going to be some overlap there because there were a few crowdfunding games that I had hands on of. So we got to talk about them as well. You know, in case you miss the individual videos, in case you don't care to watch those, that's okay too. But that's why we talk about it a little bit everywhere too. Not to saturate things just because I like talking about stuff in the first place, right? Oh, don't do social commentary, Chris. Went into the YouTube comment section uh, tonight. That was my mistake, right? There, there was the mention of the dice throne toxic fan base and community, right? Don't talk about social comment. You're on the wrong channel. Social commentary in the board game hobby side of things is what I do, folks. In case you've missed any of my rants, right? Yeah, right. Petulant children. I stand by that. I said what I said. That's all. Intro over. Let's go. Best of the crowdfunding. You know, it's going to stay tried and true, right? Because I talk about stuff that I'm really interested in on this channel in the first place. So I don't talk about stuff that I don't really have a huge interest in. You know, from an ease to play, I love it overall. Best of the month. I mean, I have to say still at this point, Mythic Mischief. I'm going to sound like a shill at this point, but I really like this. If you know, I talk about abstracts a lot. I really love abstracts period. Someone was trying to argue with me in the comment section telling me that I'm just basically a shill for these overpriced and overmarketed games. And they were like, well, you just clearly don't know what you're missing. You're basically your head stuck up your own rear, uh, sniffing all of the deluxe miniature components and you can't like these things. And I'm like, dude, and, and I just deleted my whole thing, right? Because rage, you know, I want to be right on the internet. If you've ever seen that XKCD uh, comic, uh, somebody's wrong on the internet. I need to correct them. You know, and I kind of just deleted my thing and I said, hey, look, man, I agree to disagree, but I love abstracts. My, some of my favorite games are Hive, Tok, Yinch, and Czar, right? Yeah, is this one over deluxified? Yeah, it is. You know what? I'll make my peace with it because it's a really good freaking game too. I love the tooth player asymmetry that you can kind of find your own faction with. I mean, the biggest downside again, like I said then, and I'll say now, and I'll completely say it again with almost all of these asymmetric faction games is you have too many of them and you're gonna find ones that aren't for you and you're gonna waste your money on that aspect of things. You know, I'm looking at you, Root, right? If you're a Root aficionado, you going, oh, I love all of the Root factions just the same, darling. They're just fantastic. No, no. People are like, I played this one. I love this one. This is what I, so why do you have all the expansions? Anyway, next comment, me and the social commentary, that doesn't happen in my videos. Oof. You're in for a rude awakening if you're one of those people that thought that wasn't gonna happen. Um, You know, what else though? I mean, we talked about Beast and Shattered Isles, right? Uh, this is a divisive game. This is probably one of the most divisive games I've seen. People really, really like it or really, really hate it, which actually reminds me very similarly of Vagrant Song, right? So let's just talk about both of those at the same time. Vagrant Song, people were like, oh, it's too fiddly. The rules or reviews are all over the place. Like, okay, I didn't realize they were all over the place too, right? Like, guess I'm in the minority right there. I don't know. I guess if you're looking for something to complain about, sure, there are some fiddly rules. There's a lot of other small little things you need to remember sometimes with that. But in terms of dungeon crawls and overhead, not and nearly as much as some of the larger, uh, more renowned of its compatriots as well. You, you can make the argument that, yeah, it's probably a little overpriced on crowdfunding. I can't argue that. You can get the base game at retail for less. It's one of those where if you really like the product, you support the publisher. And if you don't, you know what? It's okay too. Just like Garfield Games says, go get it at retail if you really want it as well from that aspect of things. So no qualms about that one way or the other. By the way, what the freaking fork does fiddly mean? I hate that, right? It's it's a common, just rote, overused terminology in this hobby, right? It's like, oh, this area control game is uh, a night fight in a phone booth. You've heard that one a thousand times. You've heard fiddly it's because people can't actually describe what they mean they mean they just they just don't like it personally speaking most of the time it feels like i know some of you in the comment section will actually say this is what i mean by fiddly but you know also that the vast majority of people that actually legitimately try and use that comment they're not actually using it in that way and so that's what kind of irritates me but you know beast again very divisive you either love it or hate it Many people were commenting previously that it's just a completely horrible, unbalanced game. It's a meta game. You're going to get that with all of these meta games. And you need to know what you're going into. 
You know, there was recently also a post on Reddit basically saying, what game on crowdfunding has ruined crowdfunding for you? And one of the highest posts uh, upvoted on that was basically someone shilling out that again, you know, Reddit has a hard on for this for some reason. Crowdfunding is awful. You know, uh, publishers do not literally screen any games. They just work on all presentation. Backers are clueless. Uh, backers are idiots. And so um, they just continue to fleece people. And it's like, well, one, there's more rule books out. There's more videos out at the time of you pre-ordering it than any almost retail game that you can pre-order at the same time, right? You're lucky for most pre-orders if the Dice Tower's done a video. A lot of the time they haven't even gotten to it yet. And so, it, but you know, it's popular to bash on things. And don't get me wrong, there's plenty of horrible projects out there. I'll probably do a video either before or after this talking about the latest updates on some of those bad ones. So, so again, I will hold them as accountable as I feel like is necessary. But I also don't want to hit you over the head with it all the time either, right? Like crowdfunding is awful. I mean, you know what? Pros, cons with both sides of things. That's also why I've started doing the don't back it or don't buy it at retail, right? Don't buy it at retail. Here's why. Great game, but think about it from that aspect too. So, I mean, those are the three that I really covered. You know, I'm going to give the edge slightly to Defenders of the Wild over Flock Together. Just because I just preferred it probably just slightly more overall. Why? I don't know. It's a little bit more like Spirit Island. I like a little bit more of the asymmetry. They're both good games. I think overall, test of time-wise, if you had to say one or the other, I mean, that's the way I would go. But again, your mileage is going to vary. So those were just some great games overall. And then the other one, I espoused it on the crowdfunding roundup right now. It just ended recently. Card game. It's not going to be the one I talked about once or twice, but it's actually going to be Trick Takers. I went for it. I, I couldn't not do it. Um, Portland Gaming Collective, I, I said, okay, I want this game. I want it. I want it. It's not going to be widely available. You'll be lucky to maybe to get a copy in the secondary market, and you probably can if you scrounge and save. And But I just said, you know what? Screw it. I want to back it. Again, putting my money where a little bit where my mouth is sometimes on these small indie projects. And you know what? I don't have the best track record on some of these that you know stand the test of time. I don't. I don't. But that's why I've gotten away from, you know, backing a lot of stuff. And that's why I encourage people on a frequent basis to not back as much, right? It's okay to not back things. Preview videos are made for a marketing stance. Preview videos, anything marked preview is not there to help you make a good decision, folks. It's because somebody, and now know nothing against the people that are making these, right? Nothing against those people whatsoever because it makes income for them and it gets the company uh, some publicity. But let's be completely transparent here. I've seen marketing people talk about this on other social media platforms like Twitter, where they legit say, we do this from a marketing standpoint. We pay for marketing. We don't pay for you to get the best cost savings or the best analysis of whether or not this is right for you which is why now on a weekly basis, I know I skipped I skipped this past week's uh, prior to me filming this, crowdfunding roundup, I read all the rule books. I watch the videos so I can tell you how the game plays. And so hopefully it also helps you decide whether or not it's truly, truly right for you. So like that hard on that Reddit had for hating on it so that you eliminate some of that pure head stuck in the sand as they say. So anyway, social commentary over, right? Nah. Um, I don't know. That was about it right now. Those are the big ones. Again, we had Isofarian Guard come back around. We had the new Hoplomachus. Uh, Dragon Eclipse going on still at the time of me filming this. I'm kind of scrolling through things right here uh, on the screen to kind of see what else we had going on. A few other smatterings. The Barrage. Fromage. I can't think of another one that rhymes. Final Girl Season 3. Creature Caravan. Creature Caravan was probably the biggest letdown for me this month. Again, just because I went into it thinking this was going to be a creature caravan campaign, and it was kind of an everything but creature caravan campaign. And, and again, no qualms against it. Red Raven puts out, you know, a very uh, consumer friendly ish product, uh, I'll say. You know, as, you know, people really like their product, they really like the customer service, they like the interactions that they put with them. They do a good job. They're one of those companies like Garfield that seems really responsive in that same realm. But. You know, then all of a sudden it was aisle bound and then all the stretch goals again, no problem against no stretch goals, but it was all reprints of stuff, which is fine. Uh, rule book came out halfway through again, fine. 
I just didn't feel like the focus was on that as much. And it wasn't really, unless I completely missed something prior to the campaign, it was the Creature Caravan campaign. And then during the campaign, it was Creature Caravan and its whole host of friends and menageries and everything else going along. So just from a personal standpoint, I, I really wanted to like Creature Caravan personally more. My wallet though, at the same time is saying, oh, it's actually not a bad thing, Chris, right? No FOMO or less FOMO on that one. So that was my top crowdfunding of the month. I've still got my eye on transmissions, which is kind of lurking under the radar. I don't know, we'll see. Uh, top games though, top games of the month. And this was kind of all over the place. <sighs> top games that I didn't mention already. You know, I got Castles of Burgundy played again. Not sure if that review is going to be coming out before or after this one, but I really freaking like Castles of Burgundy, right? It's sitting actually right over there next to the camera, if you don't believe me, uh, which, you know, again, comment section, you know, on YouTube never does. Here's the playmat, and it's literally right here, folks. It's a great game. Um, the, the biggest issue with it is it's portable. It's not portable. It's not. It's a monstrosity from that aspect of things. And the deluxified towers miniatures are fantastic because it's Awakened Realms, but they're also completely, utterly impractical. The acrylic tiles, awesome. The inserts that hold the tiles in place on your player board, freaking amazing. The play mat, play mats are my new only, you know, qualified liking deluxification as a whole across the board now. So that works as well. But um, yeah, it, you know, I can't take it anywhere. Can't take it anywhere. And that kind of stinks, you know? It's, it's even a chore sometimes to get out and lug around even in here, you know? So that's going to affect its ability to get to the table in general, which isn't a horrible thing, but it's just such a great game that, you know, you want to have more access to it at the same time. And that's probably the biggest Achilles heel of that as well. Achilles heel, if in case you're not familiar with that Greek uh, story in the first place, the mythology behind it, right? So basically the mother of Achilles uh, gets her son to be dipped in the river that makes him immune to everything like the other gods. But when they're dipping him in there, they have to hold on to something. And so they hold on to him by his heel. So that's the one part of the thing that doesn't go under the water. Or I think it's water, right? And therefore, that is his weak spot. Hence the metaphor. Anyway, I don't know how. My, my, my mother was an eighth grade English teacher, folks. I listened to Greek mythology when I was young in her classroom. When we were watching, when I was being babysat in there sometimes before I went to school. And we talked about it at home. And she would bring home the kids. Anyway, kids projects that were doing it. I know. So anyway, I, I digress. Uh, founders. Founders, actually, from this way. That surprised me. Surprised me, actually. Uh, I didn't like it at first, in case you missed that video. I didn't really like it at first. And then I played it again, and it was much, much better. I, I was really surprised at how the between two cities aspects of the point scoring is really kind of clever. But it's incredibly deceiving because it's much more complex and thinky than the initial game lets on from a tile laying aspect of things. And you don't have as much control because of the double-sided nature of those tiles in the first place. And so that's my biggest caveat because it's also gonna be a little bit harder and longer at the two player count. I didn't think the expansion was totally as necessary, but I thought you could probably go without it too. But overall, surprisingly impressed by that game. Cascadia and the Landmarks expansion. Uh, my review went out as well recently. <sighs> It was really good. I really like the landmarks aspects of things. Not going to ever play without it now. But the essential box is a five and six player expansion thrown in with the landmarks and additional scoring objectives. And it's probably, this is probably the issue, right? It's probably too small to have them each separated. So they threw them both together. And yeah, you're going to pay a little bit higher cost. That's kind of why I liked what... Pandasaurus did with like the loop where you've got just this right because this is what you could have done with Cascadia landmarks it would have been slightly bigger than this but it would have had all those cards and just the landmark uh cards and uh wooden meeples and it would be slightly larger and completely okay and you could have a completely five to six player expansion separate something like Sagrada if you will but I know business wise where you did what you did but it's still a really good expansion uh, the other expansion that surprised me was Interbellum from Furnace. Now, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with Furnace yet. If that's going to be a trade or a keep, the expansion definitely makes it a notch up. So it gives you more long-term depth in your collection from an engine building standpoint. And I was surprised at how well I liked the auction aspect 
as well as you know trying to win the main objective on the bottom and the top secondary objective because that's the problem with a lot of auction games right you lose the auction and then you kind of lose the war right you just lose your bid potentially or you don't get rewarded at all and this gives you sometimes where you're actually vying more for the second one towards the end of the game rather than the main objective in the card in the first place you may already have that you may just want the resources or the additional conversion so i was really happy by that although the sort of scaling bidding thing at the end adding extra coal to bid super high kind of seems a little not as necessary that was the part i just didn't really like as much what else we got going on um i talked about it point city i talked about that one i talked about uh monasterium should be hopefully out before this video my review of that as a heavier dice placed worker placement and then fit the print uh, fit the print should i talk about that now i have a review coming up that one too fit the print um it's sitting over uh the stack under here because i just filmed prior to this video um ish the cascadero cascadero one by the way check this video out this is this is an awesome game but it's all the other knizia's tile laying family sitting right there so that's why they're sitting there uh, but I think the uh, fit the print is under there, actually hiding right there. And I love some real time game. I love real time game. I love real time game. Sorcerer City, highly underrated game. People hate it because it's real time and it's tiling. Uh, people don't like Bullet for the same reason. Bullet is a top five game for me all time. This just kind of missed the mark for me. I hate saying that. It missed the mark for me. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. That's the biggest problem, right? There's just too much unknown with a tile laying time based game. And you can do the turn based thing, you can do the family based thing. But oftentimes, you're really only worried about one main aspect of laying those tiles down and some of the other secondary, tertiary even objectives, you're just kind of like guessing at the end. And that doesn't always feel as good. You want to feel like you have some control. So yeah, that's what's on my best of the month. I played a few other things. I've got the new WizKids game, uh, Star Trek uh, Discovery, The Black Alert. It's a head-to-head -head team based, but also one versus one. Star Trek versus the enemies and trying to play a game of cat and mouse, essentially. Very interesting game. Not sure quite I have the full feel of it yet, but I'm gonna be reviewing that in the near future. And I got another round or two in of Terraforming Mars, the dice game, which I think you can easily have alongside the other Terraforming Marses if you have any inclination or just get that one alone. I actually really like it. I think it's by far and away the most accessible Terraforming Mars game. And so just from that aspect that somehow you distilled the gameplay into something different than the other two, as well as making it more accessible and not making dice too random is an absolutely fantastic thing. I mean, people who like Terraforming Mars are probably not going to like it nearly as much, though. And so that's going to be where the split is. And maybe I'm wrong. I'm probably interpreting or guessing at that standpoint wrong, but that's my own personal feeling. So um, there you go. Those are my top best of the month. I mean, I didn't talk about a bunch of the other stuff, but you know what? Enough social commentary, right? I'm done. I can't. Just some stuff just grinds your gears. People are just, I mean, have absolutely no consideration for other people around them nowadays, right? It's all about me. It's all me focused, I centered. No, no, not, not cool, not true, not the way you act. There, now I'm done. Peace out. What'd you play? What was awesome? What missed the mark for you? Let me know. Stay classy, have a great day.